Hello and welcome to Living a Culture of Life podcast by Human Life International. I'm your host, Colleen Haupt, and I'm joined today by Father Bouquet, our president. Welcome, Father. Oh, thank you, Colleen. Looking forward to our conversation today. Yeah, it should be a good one today. Today we're going to be discussing how contraception changes the marital act. So this should be a really exciting conversation. So let's just start, Father, with like, what are the goods, like the purposes of the marital act um, in like the Catholic understanding of marriage? Can we just start with that as a foundation and then we can move into how contraception changes that? Sure. And if you don't mind, I, I'll actually want to begin with something a little different before we kind of leap in. And okay. it's something I shared with you in the beginning. So it's um, a wonderful book that's just actually uh, come out and it's called The Journey of Love. And uh, many people would be familiar with St. Gianna Mola. Mm-hmm. And so these are actually love letters, and I'm going to put the book up because it's now in English. It was in Italian, and I just received this uh, from uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Gianna Emanuela, the daughter of Pietro and Gianna, and uh, who's been a good friend of mine, has gotten me a closer friend over the years, and, and a great blessing. So she sent me this uh, new, new copy. And what I'd what I like to do is kind of to help us in our conversation is these are love letters. And, you know, today in our email world, where <laughs> love letters are written. I mean, there's no doubt about that. People are writing very beautiful things. But these were handwritten letters between Pietro and Gianna, even when Pietro was in the United States. And the reason why I, I, I kind of wanted to start with this, and I'm going to read just one uh, letter, the, just the, the latter part of the letter, as Gianna and Pietro are preparing for marriage. And it's just a beautiful way of talking about marriage, seeing the what marriage is. Okay. And it goes to the heart of what your question uh, uh, that you brought up. And she says, so this is just the, the, the back part of that letter. She says, my Pietro, our wedding is just a few days away now, and I feel very moved to be so near receiving the sacrament of love. We will be working with God in his creation. In this way, we can give children, we can give him children who will love him and serve him. Pietro, will I be able to be the wife and mother of your children you have always wanted? I hope so, because you deserve it, and I love you so much. Now, oh, this is September 23rd, 1955. Now, these were letters going back and forth, and yeah. I, I should have told you what I was going to do before we started, but uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's just it's a beautiful yeah. way of looking how we approach marriage, how we approach the conversation of marriage. And so to do that, you know, she's speaking about, I can't wait to share with you this sacrament of love. I love how personal it is too. Like, it's not just, I think it's really easy on the podcast sometimes to talk about marriage in a hypothetical sense. And this is just like a really nice personal, like some, what they actually wrote to each other before. It's, they're beautiful. They're, they're, to hear uh, Dr. Uh, Gianna Emanuela read these and speak about her mom and her dad, her mm-hmm. mom who she did not know. Yeah. So, but to, she knew her father, and she, she lived. was the daughter who was born when Saint John died. Correct. Right? Yeah, that's okay. correct. And so, when you think of Pietro, Pietro raised these beautiful children, and so uh, Doctor Gianna Emanuela lived with her father, cared for her father to the very end, whose cause has also now been opened. And these are, you know, just to show what marital love is. And I couldn't couldn't help when when she, when I first heard her speak about the letters um, of Saint John Paul II. You know, mm-hmm. who really talked about and would take, you know, the young people and young couples and he would spend so much time with them and what we call today the theology of the body, which I'm gonna I'm gonna get to the answer to your question. So I'm coming <laughs> at your question here. Yeah, and no, that was... so but but I thought is when you read these letters and you hear the, the personal relationship between these two people who loved each other deeply and longed to share life with each other. Mm-hmm. And and especially when you get to the letters when she is now ill. You know, and she's facing a situation and her conversation with her husband in letters that still continued after marriage. That's why they're love letters. And Mm -hmm. today, you know, uh, and and imagine, you know, waiting three weeks, waiting two months to get a letter. And, you know, but that is and they long for those letters. And it comes to the heart of the question you posed, because for that, I like to go to the to the actual marriage vows, because that's the way the church approaches marriage. So there are words that are spoken, Mm -hmm. a language. But there's another side of the language, and that is the body language. And that goes back to John Paul. So thinking about how the church approaches. So when you think about the vows that a couple exchanges, right? So as a priest witnessing the marriage, Mm -hmm. right? The sacramental union of man and woman. Which they bestow on the other person. They're bestowing on each other. They exchange this beautiful sacrament, and I witness and other witnesses, that we call the best man and maid (laughs) of honor, but the two witnesses with me are witnessing this exchange. And so what do we hear? 
You know, and so there are questions that priests will ask before mm-hmm. they exchange their vows. Have you come here freely and without reservation to give yourselves to each other in marriage? Mm-hmm. We have. Will you love and honor each other all of your life? You know, mm-hmm. We will. Will you accept children lovingly from God and bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? We will. So think about that, you know, Colleen. So mm-hmm. in those those words spoken, questions asked, then in the vows, I, John, I, Cindy. So mm-hmm. here they recognize that marriage is exclusive. I give myself only and totally to you, period. Second, it's indissoluble until death do us part that I pledge myself, you to me, I to you, until the end of our day in this world. And the third is the openness, that part of this love is the fertility, is mm-hmm. a total gift of self. And this is where it's important for us. This is how the church approach, it goes back to your question, <laughs> okay? And, <Yes. laughs> and that's what's important here, because as we understand scripturally, the mm-hmm. two shall become one, bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, we hear in Genesis. Well, this becomes expressed now you know, uh, not in just words, it becomes expressed bodily. And so there's a body language that happens here. And the body language is the unity of and, and the openness to life, what we call the unitive and procreative ends of marriage, mm-hmm. that the body speaks now, that the words that they have spoken are lived again and again in this expression of total self-giving. Mm-hmm. And so that to think about how those three questions and how those vows are expressed in the marital act, mm-hmm. called marital it's love. It's like a renewing of vows, basically. Each and, and every kind time. Of... It's, it's, it's in the sense of, of, of constant recommitment, renewal, total giving, total self, total emptying of self. And so nothing held back. That in each of these moments of expression is the person recommitting that, you know, and, and, and that body language, that body love, if I may put it that way, the conjugal love, helps strengthen that unity and strengthens mm-hmm. that bond and brings great joy, you know, to, in, to, to, to the couple. And so, but in a world, this is a strange language. Yeah. And we don't see that anymore. That's why we don't agree with the language of the world. It's a very, it's, 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 it's a, there's no motivation in that language. It's, it's, it's actually impoverished language. Mm-hmm. And I think the challenge for us is, you know, how to reteach this language and in a world that's very bodily oriented. It's very physical. It was interesting because I was reading a little bit of uh, this book, the inseparable book that you gave me. Hold up if people want to see it. (laughs) Um, When I was preparing for this podcast and he was, one of the essays was pointing out that um, it's rooted in the fact that we're like a body soul composite and that like your body formed by the soul and that when you try to separate like sex from the procreative side of it, you're actually separating the body and soul. You're saying that like, I, I'm trying to remember the exact, I should have made more notes on it, no, but right. is that Descart, 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 Descartian idea of separating the body and trying to like suppress it and dominate it and use it for what you want it to mean instead of what is naturally in it as part of the body. Which now goes to the last part of your question. How does contraception change the language? Mm-hmm. So think about that. It does. It falsifies the language because now we've actually changed the language. We've changed the words because the words are... I freely give myself to you, you give yourself to me in marriage, and then the couple say to each other, and to be welcoming and be a co-creator, to to welcome children. So all Mm -hmm. of a sudden now, our words have been changed. We Mm -hmm. say, I love you, but the body language is completely different. And say, I'm holding back from you. Now I'm not giving my total self. Mm-hmm. Now I am, I'm, I'm trying to isolate a particular aspect of this body language from what the words are meant to speak and what the body is meant to express. And this is something so important. And, you know, so that's what I mean by the world's understanding is so impoverished because it's looking at it from, you know, a contraceptive mentality, uh, from protection from disease. It's looking mm-hmm. at it purely from a physicality. Can we go back to, so like you have the two goods of marriage, you have unity and like procreation. Why are those two inseparable? Why can you not have, like, I mean, I guess that's kind of, again, like restating this question, but why can you not have the unity without the procreative side of it? Why do you need to have the procreative part in there to have the unity? Well, it goes back to those, those, those uh, questions that are answered. You know, they're being asked and also to the vowels. Because again, if the language itself, if what is being expressed here is to, as Gianna expresses to Pietro, 
that, mm-hmm. that, that we are going to be. Let's just, you know, re- repeat it, you know, one more time. Hopefully I didn't change my page here. <laughs> and that is, you know, uh, we will be working with God in creation. In this way, we can give him, God, children who will love and serve him. Mm-hmm. So the mindset of Gianna in Pietro is to, to participate in something greater than themselves that God is inviting them to be a part of mm-hmm. in this co-creation. And so God is one, unity. And so it's inseparable, is in the book that I gave you to look at. Yeah. And so that, but when we try to separate, we literally are, in a sense, divorcing, you know, what the language is saying Mm -hmm. and what the body is meant to fully express. Which is going back to the whole Gnostic idea that like you can say one thing and mean it like with your soul in a sense, but not with your body. And so when you try to separate those, it doesn't work because your body is so composite. When a person says that I love you, I mean, I don't want to get into, do they really mean it? Of course, I can't mm-hmm. read a person's intent. But but the language is not there. The, mm-hmm. the, the fullness of that language is there. So it's in a sense, I love you, but not all of you. Mm-hmm. I, I, I love the very fact that you are capable of being fertile, but I don't want you to be fertile in this moment. Mm-hmm. So there's a... There's, or I want to give myself, but I don't want to totally give myself because correct. I'm going to hold back my fertility. That's correct. So so you can see how, how, how does it really express the two become one? Well, you're not fully one because they're not fully giving themselves totally to each other. Mm-hmm. They are not fully expressing the language that they spoke to each other in mm-hmm. the exchange of vows and the commitment they made, what we call a covenant, all mm-hmm. right? We don't call them contracts, <laughs> all right? A covenant. And so this covenant speaks of something, not just of the couple, but of their relationship to God, like Gianna and Pietro. Now Pietro responds. I didn't read mm-hmm. his response, but yeah. to read his response is quite beautiful to her. And to hear how he himself acknowledges that he too longs to share in this wonderful love that God is permitting them to have with each other. What a beautiful expression of, of, of recognizing gift. So yes. that's the word that gets lost here, is that it's not just the gift of me physically, there's mm-hmm. also the gift of what I and only I can bring as male and female. Mm-hmm. And so the two become one, and it expresses this unity that God himself is one. And it expresses that God reveals himself as a God of life, Mm -hmm. That this union between man and woman, this complementarity of which we speak, and and how the body language speaks the language of the words, and that this very gift of self is always open to life, welcoming life, and recognizing that this is the fruit of their love, their conjugal love. Mm -hmm. And to do anything other than that is to falsify the act. It, It changes the act. I also thought it was interesting in here where he was talking about how this is sexuality is like the only really part of the body that we regular like that's just, we meaning society regularly like try to divorce from its biological intention. Like, yes, there are people who will like they use the example of like eating food and then like forcing yourself to throw up so that you get the pleasure of eating, but you don't actually have any of the like co- like consequences in a sense, like calories or whatever. And Like, so some people do do that, but most people recognize that that is a misuse of the body and that that's something disordered and that's not good. And that it's like, you shouldn't be doing that. Mm -hmm. And, but, and like, we, they also use like lots of different examples of like, oh, breathing, like your lungs are for getting oxygen and how like, obviously sexuality is meant for procreation. Like fertility is part of it. That's what it's intended for. And it's the only real thing that we do with our bodies that people think, oh, well, you can have the pleasure without having what it's actually trying to accomplish biologically. And it would be, if we said that about like our lungs or something like, oh, I want to be able to breathe without getting oxygen. Like that's stupid. Right. This is also kind of not, right. not logical. <laughs> well, I think, you know, if you just, exactly. And I think we, we look at it when you use the word falsify, when mm-hmm. we falsify something. So when I, I brought something with me, this is taken from uh, the Catholic Conference of Bishops website. Okay. And it's on the, 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 the church's teaching, you know, on conjugal love. And so I'm referring to one particular part here. Married love differs from any other love in the world. By its nature, the love of husband and wife is so complete, so ordered to a lifetime of communion with God and each other, that it is always open to creating a new human being, they, being they will love and care for together. So that's a very different language of what you just expressed from a worldly how mm-hmm. the world approaches, how it, how it approaches. And so when we divorce an understanding 
of the conjugal act, Mm -hmm. the act that's actually only to be expressed between husband and wife. So Mm -hmm. that's the first thing that goes countercultural. Yeah. Right. And especially in today's cultural understanding where Mm -hmm. sex has become void of any commitment, Mm -hmm. any, any lifetime responsibility and any consequence of that union in the beginning of a child. That Mm -hmm. is a foreign matter of fact, it goes back what contraception's purpose is, contra life. It's against conception. Mm -hmm. So its whole intent is to breach the very union that this act is meant to be be open to always. So that's Mm -hmm. why it falsifies. I like the word falsify, you know, and, and I think it's important. And then it goes on. So part of God's gift to husband and wife is this ability creation, to be a co-creator in and through their love to cooperate in God's creative power. Mm -hmm. So I think, Colleen, the the real issue is that, you know, if we kind of peel it further and further back, take this out of the equation for a moment. Mm -hmm. When people lose sight of the religious, the spiritual understanding, the sacramental understanding, the nature of marriage, the good that marriage is, and, and what marriage is shares a part in an expression of you know this this love that God expresses to us. Mm-hmm. You know, Scripture itself is ripe with images of marriage as an image Song of God's of love. <laughs> exactly. So here, you know, what's happened is when we rupture, when we pull apart this understanding, then we find ourselves where we are today, where it where we look at this as kind of a recreational sport. And we see it purely as, you know, non-committal. And we hear people with multiple partners in a lifetime. And as and then we also hear the consequences of that when there's not a want for life. And we see the whole abortion uh, mindset enter in. So we can see the progression mm-hmm. when we don't understand the very nature, the very beauty of marriage. And, and that's why I, 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 the Lord was so good because I just got this book, you know, from uh, Dr. Gianna, uh, Mola, uh, Gianna Emanuela. And I was so grateful for it that I thought it would be a great way of, of leading into this, when, especially when you mentioned what we wanted to talk about today. Yeah. And, and, and I think it is that language. I mean, I can hear without the couple being married. Okay, this is prior to their marriage. They're getting ready to be, and yet they're expressing words that yeah. reflect what marriage really is. The sacrament of love, you know, that that she is saying, I can't wait to live this sacrament of love with you, Pietro. Mm-hmm. You know, so very personal, you know, and and so this is where you can hear, you know, as as, as the bishops are speaking in their te- in their document and teaching, you know, mm-hmm. this commitment of a lifetime, this giving of total self. Nothing is held back here. And that's why the unitive, Colleen, and the procreative are inseparable. Mm-hmm. That they 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 really reflect this singularity, if I may say it that way, of this 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 gift of self, this total gift of self, that so that, that that we say that we want to be united, but then we're not allowing that unitive act to mm-hmm. to reach the fruit that it's meant to to reach. So even even when a couple doesn't conceive, mm-hmm. but yet that was their intent, their their openness to life was not hindered. I feel like a lot of times people will defend like defend contraception. By saying that, like, oh, we need well, you need to allow couples to have that unity, but they can't have a child right now. But it's interesting, like, basically, what you're saying is that when you deny the procreative side of it, you're also denying the unity. Like in people's like attempts to try to make one superior and like right. the only option, you're both getting rid of both of them. Like you're just undermining everything. That's correct. Both suffer. So you, it's yeah. So I think that's what's important here. And so, and and again, you know, it's, we can save this for another different podcast when we can talk about, you know, uh, you know, fertility awareness. You know, and we can mm-hmm. talk about what that is because you bring up a very, very important part when people are confronted with situations of life that are very much part of life, the unknown, mm-hmm. the uncertainties that life will always bring to us, and that is situations that a couple will face, you know, mm-hmm. in, in their in their decision making, and that we can talk about that later time. But but again. To answer it just briefly is just to say that, you know, that we're not introducing anything artificial here. We're not yeah. hindering in any way. We're cooperating with the natural gift that God has given, mm-hmm. and there's no hindering, and there's always the openness and welcoming, you know, of a child. That if a child were begotten in this moment, that even though that may have, we had maybe thought to postpone for a grave reason. Mm-hmm. We would welcome that child because we we will always open to that child, mm-hmm. and we will love that child, and and so and care for the child, and and the child is always to be begotten 
you know, from a conjugal act. You know, never to, a child is not a commodity. And so again, you can see how the fruit of contraception now treats the child as a mm-hmm. thing, as a commodity, something we want or something we don't want. So you can see how the progression of when there's a rupture, a mm-hmm. falsification of a good, that it will show itself. And that the the end never justifies the mean in the mm-hmm. sense of, you know, that, you know, uh, and how we approach this. And people will say, you hear it, so I hear it so often, you know, you know, as a priest of 30 years, you know, people say, you know, uh, you know, uh, we got into a relationship before we were married, you know, uh, and people try to justify, you know, and, and feel. But the reality is there's something false that's happened here. Yeah. And no matter what yes. your intent was, that you started out by falsifying a good. And so... And that's the part that we have to look at. That's why I go back to that, like that the church is teaching on the, the language, the verbal language, mm-hmm. the articulation. With that, the vows. Right. With yeah. the vows and with, with the exchange of those commitments, but yeah. also those how those words are spoken every day by a husband and by a wife. They're spoken daily and they're renewed daily. Every mm-hmm. time he or she says, I love you, I care for you, they're there in good times and in bad and richer and in poor. And so mm-hmm. all those moments, all those words literally are brought together in now the body language of conjugal love, of marital love. It's so holistic. It's making sure that like what a couple is saying to each other is also being lived out with their bodies because That's again, right. the body soul, like right. we, <laughs> the body, the soul is the form of the body. Like what you're saying with your body needs to be reflected in what you're saying with your words and what you're saying with your words needs to be reflected with what you're saying with your body. And it's unifying those and then unifying the couple. It's mirrored. And and when you see that and when it's lived every day that way. And mm-hmm. so they when so when conjugal love does occur, you know, that it's it's an expression of joy and pleasure. It's a it's but it expresses something so much deeper that's that that's not just left in, in the physical realm, but that there is always this spiritual realm that's always involved in an in expression of this is an act of unity. It's an act of self giving. Mm-hmm. You can see that the commitment, the the indissolubility, because this act is only to be expressed between these two people who are committed to each other for a lifetime, and it's and it's not to be arbitrarily shared with anyone else, and yeah. that a child who has a right in it, rights themselves to be welcomed in such an environment, mm-hmm. to be welcomed in such a moment of unity as only God Himself would also bring into bear, you know? And so you can see all the language come to this this moment. But basically, it's what you vow at the altar is then has to be lived out in your words every day. And then that has to be reaffirmed with the body. And if you're like, basically, if you miss any one of those, something's gone drastically wrong. If you don't have the vows, then what you're doing is wrong. And right. if you're not saying it, then your relationship has a lot of problems. And if you're holding back, like with contraception, right. then you're also like, they're all like going to be getting, like breaking down a foundation. Correct. That's right. It's whittling away. And that's why Father Marx, our founder, talked about the contraceptive mentality. Yeah. That it's a mindset that begins to take very deep root. And mm-hmm. I begin to look at my my spouse as a thing to be used, as an opportunity for pleasure alone, as yeah. as an object of, of, of my passion, an object of my uh, my lust. And mm-hmm. it can. It, will, it can become lustful because now I have, uh, in a sense of, by removing you know, this procreative, this openness to life, then basically I have falsified th- this relationship and now it's easy for me to objectify my spouse. And this yeah. doesn't just happen with women, it happens with men. And, mm-hmm. you know, we hear it more predominantly with how women feel, mm-hmm. you know, uh, but we do hear it and I have heard it, you know, yeah. in, in reverse. And so, especially as this mentality, you know, comes in, especially today, when you hear many young women at the age of 18 have themselves sterilized, oh you know, and, and then want to enter into relationships. And so, so we have so many things affecting. Uh, yeah. That's why I, I appreciate the opportunity, you know, to, to discuss what is full, full, full marital love. What do, does the church understand and what does scripture teach us, mm-hmm. which is where the church's teaching obviously finds its root and yeah. how that teaching is given to us in Jesus Christ and, and, and a sacramental understanding, you know, of, of this great sacrament of love that, <laughs> that Gianna speaks to Pietro. And, and, and for those that are unfamiliar, you know, with John Paul's, you know, great exhortations and teaching on the theology of the body, mm-hmm. this is a good time, you know. And I would even say to married couples, Colleen, that you know, maybe you're listening to us, you know, and I hope they are. 
is if you is and maybe asking God, do I? How do I treat my wife? How do I treat my husband? Are we approaching this? You know, because even those that maybe are not contracepting, you know, also have areas of growth in in this relationship. Mm-hmm. And any married couple of which I am not, but again, <laughs> walking with couples, that's my experience. But listening even to those who are living this life, know mm-hmm. that it's a day to day renewal of mm-hmm. commitment, and to and to express in word. And in body, not just in the conjugal love body, but in daily living, what those words mean. Mm-hmm. That I give myself to you freely. It's a constant laying down of your life That's for right. the other person. It's a renewal of vows. It's yeah. a renewal, like you said earlier, it's just a, it's a constant renewal. And, and to, as I lovingly say when I travel in, uh, in, in giving teachings on marriage and on the issues of marriage mm-hmm. and the beauty of marriage, I love how you did it earlier because that is always my mindset too. I yeah. very seldomly talk about these two subjects together. You know, I try very much to keep the contraceptive conversation or lectures and teaching mm-hmm. separate from what is marriage? What are the ends of marriage? Because to really let the beauty speak for itself. And, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I remember, uh, you know, a, a couple sharing with me, you know, after one of the presentations, I, I said, when you got up this morning, you know, and you greeted the day, you know, did you tell your wife you love her? Mm-hmm. Did she tell you she loved you? And and it's amazing to watch couples. And they laugh and they say, God, you know, I didn't do that. You know, when when's the last time I did that in the morning? You know, <laughs> but but the idea is is but you, then you hear it. You know, no, I should do that. You know, and and it's just a, it's having that mindset that this is the person I love more than any other person in this world that I've given myself and my our children are an expression of that love. They're not separate love. They're they're part of this love. And to yeah. see them in that vein and to know this is this woman is the mother of my children. Wow. This is the father of my children. Wow. And to be able to to speak of that, to talk about that. And it goes back to what I said earlier, Colleen, how children should learn this from their parents. And it doesn't have mm-hmm. to be more information necess- than necessary. What I mean yeah. by that is when a child, daughter, or son sees their father, how he treats their mother. They should know that's love. And how the mother treats. Again, I think of these love letters of Pietro and, G- and Gianna. Yeah. And you hear, and this is what makes uh, you know Dr. Uh, Gianna Emanuela, when she, she lights up like a candle, when she, she says to speak of their love. Mm-hmm. She says, and she never saw it, but she saw it through her father. Her, her mother was gone, but her dad so loved her that every day he would still express this love. And to see that perpetuation, which goes back to lifetime commitment. When, as, as Gianna, Gianna, Dr. Gianna Emanuela talks about, she says, um, you know, her mom and dad didn't think they would only have so many years together. Mm-hmm. They never thought that at all. They thought they would have this wonderful long life together. But as you read their love letters after marriage, they understand, especially once these things began to unfold, they mm-hmm. realize, but this is also part of God's plan. Yeah. And so, and so the commitment remains. I will hold your hand until that last moment. That is a commitment. And that's how you serve God in this life. Right. And yeah. to see that the beauty of your love, conjugal love, is to be open to life, to welcome a child in all that child's splendor. And to do anything other than that mm-hmm. is to falsify the entire thing. It changes the entire conversation. It speaks different words. I might say, I love you, but my act does not show love. It's a lie. So the unity (laughs) is really not unity. Yeah. We are not truly bone of bone and flesh of flesh. The two have not really become one. Because they're holding back from the other person. Exactly. There is no totality. Or they're treating the other person like something to be avoided. (laughs) And and again, because my approach toward this Mm -hmm. is very much, you know, from experience by working with people for 30 plus years, mm-hmm. but also understanding what the church is advancing. Yeah. And and to see that the, that I can bring to the conversation as a priest something very beautiful. So I say mm-hmm. that only because I wish more priests would not be, um, uh, in a sense, we're not intimidated, I want to say, but you know, should not be shy to talk about this. At the same time, we need to help couples by mm-hmm. helping couples to help other couples. 
Yeah. To really be able to to help people live this beautiful life. Well, I think even conversations like this are important because if you can understand intellectually what's supposed to be going on, it helps you be able to live it out better. Exactly. Otherwise, you're kind of going into it blind being like, well, this doesn't seem quite sure. right or what feels sure. right. Or like you have to like kind of sometimes take a step back and be like, okay, right. this is what's actually going on. This is what marriage is supposed to be for. This is what conjugal love exactly. is for. And then it helps you live sure. it out better. And it's not academic. We're not speaking here like no, a, like a not, textbook. That's no, not no, no. what this I just is mean at like, all. Right, exactly. It's kind of easy to just like get into habits right. where you're not really thinking about it. You're not being intentional. That's and right. so I think sometimes being taking a step back and like remembering what the goods of marriage are and what the goods of conjugal love are right. and recognizing like, okay, I need to be approaching this intentionally. I need to right. be intentionally trying to form that love and that union with my spouse, right. which is life-giving. That's right. And they can't be separated. And it goes to responsibility. It's a good word mm -hmm. because it, it does. It promotes responsibility for each other, toward each other. And and that's a very, very important word. And to, to realization that, that a child that maybe that will be the fruit of this union, the possibility of fruit of this union, has mm -hmm. rights too to be begotten by uh, two people who really do, you know, are one. Mm -hmm. are committed to each other, are in an indissoluble union. So these are very, very important. So even the child that has not yet come into being, mm -hmm. you know, should be thought of. That this, this our, our, the, the child is the fruit of this love. Mm -hmm. And to see the child as a fruit of that love, that to, to know that this beautiful love that I have for my spouse and my spouse for me, you know, is that this beautiful love that's shared in this conjugal relationship, this mm -hmm. marital act, is, is open to the beautiful wonder of, of, of a child if God so wishes to bless us. And we can't wait to meet that child. This yeah. is what Gianna is expressing to Pietro. It is. And it's wonderful to hear. And in and, and, and so and what's wonderful, and I say this, Colleen, I know we're getting toward the end of our program, but <laughs> it, it's I, I'm thinking when I was I, I was recently with Dr. Gianna Emanuela yeah. in New Zealand. We were there on a yeah. mission together. And I was in the room when she was giving her, her presentation, mm -hmm. speaking about her mom and her dad. And now the majority in the room that I was in at the time were uh, mostly wives. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing to watch th the joy in that room because she's touching on, and she herself is not married. She, uh, she's, not, mm -hmm. she's not married. And so she, but she's touching on the, on, on the very essence of marriage. And whether they were mar married women in the room, majority were, but there were a lot of single women, mm -hmm. college age women, working professional women. And they're going, that's what I want. Yeah. And that's exactly what the comments were. I want what your mom and dad had. I want that kind of love. I wish my husband were here right now to hear <laughs> yeah. this. I wish my boyfriend were here to hear this. And, you, and constantly hearing that. Mm -hmm. So it's telling you it resonates. And, mm -hmm. and because within us is this longing to live the, the very purpose. I, I don't want to use that word. It, it sounds cold. But the very essence, the very beauty the of heart. what this is meant to be. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, that's why I wanted to begin, and I'm glad that we had that chance to start with a little bit of the letter, but mm -hmm. to really start with those 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 the commitment, the promises, the, the that are being made by a couple, the words that are spoken, mm -hmm. and then to hear the exchange of vows that the church puts in words. Yeah. But the couple already is in a sense having come to this moment, have now already given witness to that, and now mm -hmm. express that I, John, I, Cindy, you know, take recognize that take possession, but in a sense that I give myself and I accept this gift. Mm -hmm. And so that's what it means by free. I freely give. And so nothing held back. Everything is yours. Everything I have. And so, and that's why, you know, back to Ephesians 5 is modeling Christ mm -hmm. who sacrificed, who gave himself, who held nothing back. A total gift of self is the model of a husband mm -hmm. and the model of, of a wife. And to see that and so that's what, I guess, why you can see, it's, I get very passionate <laughs> about it, because contraception changes all that. Yeah. No matter what the intent the couple may have for the reason for it, it changes it. And for most, any couple that, you know, and I would be willing to get in here and, and talk to them, that couples who are honest, who have chosen the path of contraception, and if one day awaken to what has happened, will say, I wish someone had intervened. I wish mm -hmm. someone had spoken to me about th this. If I can undo what, what we did, because they see the damage. Mm -hmm. They see the harm it does. And in the consequences of that act, which had nothing to do with their marital act. At the time, they don't see that. Mm -hmm. 
but in time, if they're honest, they do. And I'll close with that a young couple. I remember that. You know, I'm sorry. What do you mean it had nothing to do with the marital act? In other words, that what that that the the contraception because it falsified the con. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, and I remember this one young couple. Um, uh, it, I won't tell you where I was because it's. I don't want to because they're still out there and they may be listening. I know they actually write every once in a while, so I don't want to embarrass anyone. But I remember this one couple. You know, on one particular uh, Sunday mass in preaching about the beauty of marriage, mm-hmm. I spoke about and uh, uh, the issue of contraception and the mm-hmm. falsification of it. And as many priests who do this will know, they can relate. This couple got up and left. You're right now. Wow. I wasn't speaking. Uh, you know, disrespectfully, <laughs> just speaking about what the church teaches. Yeah. Fast forward five years. Mm-hmm. I see them on one particular weekend and they come up to me and they say, can we speak to you after mass? I said, sure. And so everybody leaves and I went with a couple and the first thing out of his, uh, from him was, I owe you an apology. Mm. He says, I, I said, I, I remember you. And I, I said, I have. And I did. I prayed for them, as I do all couples. Mm-hmm. And he says, no, I, he says, we owe you an apology. He says, you were doing what we needed to hear. Mm-hmm. And we just were closed minded. And he says, and I and he says, and it took this many years and it took another priest in another parish where we had moved a new priest who came in and did exactly what you said. And we heard it this time, and so there, and he says, so that's the that's the that's the courage we all have to have, yeah. And for parents to have that courage, for priests to have that courage, for young people wanting to marry, mm-hmm. to have the courage, and to to live the full life. Yeah. I like Jesus. I've come that you might have life and have it fully, mm-hmm. full life. Marriage is beautiful, you know. And and so this is what we have to keep lifting up. Yeah. Again, it comes down to it just being so beautiful and we have to like protect it. But yep. thank you, Father, for having this conversation. So hopefully it was helpful to people out there. Um, yeah. So thank you. And to all of our listeners, please remember to like, follow, subscribe, um, keep out, keep on some checking out our podcast episodes and keep on living the culture of life. God bless. <laughs>